Today's topic is Introduction to Parallel Line Development. This method is called Parallel Line. It's based on a system of lines drawn parallel to one another on a surface of a sheet metal fitting. Typically, we use this method to develop items such as round elbows, round tees. You can also use this method to develop rectangular and oval ductwork, as long as the sides are non-tapering. Therefore, if you're interested in learning the basic principles of parallel line development, follow me in this video to learn how to lay out this truncated pipe, also called a roof jack at times. Anyways, let's get started. First of all, you're going to need to draw an elevation view of the jack or pipe that you want to fabricate. And in this case, we have a four inch diameter cut at a 30 degree angle. Right now, I am simply drawing a profile underneath this pipe. And the profile is basically what the pipe would look like if you were looking in, into it from the bottom. Now this profile, we're going to divide it into six equal spaces. There you have it. Six equal spaces on the profile line. And now let's go ahead and number these points on your profile. The next step is to add the element lines, which are also called measurement lines at times. All of these element lines slash measurement lines are parallel to one another. Draw them all the way up till they reach the miter, miter line. This is your measurement line or element line. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my pipe stretch out, which is basically the diameter of the pipe times pi. And in this case, we want a four inch diameter times pi should equal 12 and 9 sixteenths. Mark 12 and 9 sixteenths onto your stretch out line. And then the goal is going to be divide this line into 12 equal spaces. Because you're going to notice that my bottom profile has six spaces, but actually the full pipe would have 12 spaces in a full circle. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take this 12 and 9 sixteenths and I'm going to divide it in two to make life easier. I've chosen the slant rule method to divide my half into six equal spaces. So what I did here is I'm going to set my ruler to zero on one end and nine inches on the other. And if I want six equal spaces, every space should be an inch and a half on my ruler. So go ahead and mark it every inch and a half. Inch and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, and you've got nine.
Do the same thing for the other half. And then you're gonna draw your element lines vertically from your baseline. There you have it, 12 equal spaces. Now the key is to figure out where you want to put your seam. And here I'm just gonna pick number four. So on this fitting, this roof jack, or let's call it a truncated duct, I put seam on number four. Therefore, on your baseline stretch out, start with number four and number either four, five, six, or you can even go four, three, two, one. Doesn't really matter. I always like to keep it like clockwork. So here I'm using my dividers to transfer my element lines over to my pattern. So I'm setting my dividers to number four and just transfer every number four on your pattern to, with that measurement. Strike an arc. You notice we got three number fours. It's because the seam is on four. Here I'm gonna do the same thing for three, and I would do the same thing for every other element line in there. Let's go tag number three. I'll show you another way, quicker way, but not everybody can use this method because you do need a T-square or horizontal bar. And I'm just going to project my lines. This is number one. Number two. As you can see, this is a lot cleaner and faster. Now scribe your arc or your miter line. With your pencil, always look at where you're going, not where you're at. There you have it. This is your net pattern. Net pattern simply means it has no allowances for seams or connectors. Once you've allowed your allowances in a shop, go ahead, roll it, form it, and finish it. That's it for today, and I'll see you all on the next topic.